What's up, 80s Revolution, back here for your regularly scheduled programming. That's right. Last night, I was supposed to be recording the Lunchbox Collection, but I was sidetracked by ridiculous shows of generosity. We've already gone through that. I've already, I've recovered from the emotion of that. So I am ready now to kick off our second collection series. And that is my 80s retro lunchbox collection. Um, followed at the end of this by a quick pickups video, some Blu-rays and DVD sets that I want to show you so that I can put away. You know the deal. I can't put them away unless I show you. And I can't sleep unless I put them away. So I gotta show you. But first, lunch boxes. So some of my early videos, um, I talked about, you know, how cool lunch boxes are to me and why they are kind of a, um, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't call them a major part of my collection as far as like quantity is concerned, but they're a major part of my collection as part as far as sentimental value is concerned. Um, I went to a uh, I went to a Catholic school when I was a kid, um, from first grade to seventh, and the memories of of like I'm so fond of the memories of the '80s because of toys and cartoons and food and. TV shows and pop culture and all that kind of stuff that was so good back then. But the school experience was a major part of my love for that generation. And I don't think it was just the Catholic school. I mean, it might have been more, you know, more of a private school. I don't know. It, it might have been. But my experience from first through seventh grade was the best times of my life. Um, Maybe it was just a diff different time in general. Maybe kids don't have that kind of experience now in any level of school. But, I mean, in, I went to a school called St. Pius. And um, we had two classes per grade. So there were two first grade classrooms, two second grade classrooms, and on up. And each classroom had about, I don't know, 30 kids. Um, and the crazy part is from first through seventh grade, you were pretty much friends with every single one of those kids to some degree. You had your best friends, of course, and but you also were friends with everybody else. And so in the earlier grades, when you'd have birthday parties, um, you know, you could have 30 kids at your birthday party uh, because they're all your classmates. And, uh, you know, it was just it was just a great great uh, experience, um, and p why why am I talking about that? Well, because part of that experience was bringing your interests to school, whether it be you know the kind of backpack you had, um, the toys that you would bring to school. Um, I don't know the T-shirts that you'd wear on gym day, of course, because we had uniforms. Um, the pencil cases that you'd bring to school, and of course the lunch boxes. And when you brought a lunch box to school, that was your way of pretty much telling the whole class, hey, this is what I'm into. Like, I'm a G.I. Joe fan. Talk to me about G.I. Joe. And you would make relationships based on the kind of stuff that you brought to school. If somebody was sitting in the cafeteria with you and saw that you'd had a you know, a Hulk Hogan lunchbox or a Ghostbusters lunchbox, that's an opening of a conversation right there. And, um, you know, they were they were colorful and, and very artistic. And, you know, again, it was your way of telling your classmates that this is who I am. You know, I'm a, I'm a GoBots fan and not a Thundercats fan because here's... Or Thundercats. Um, Transformers fan. And here's my GoBots lunchbox to prove that, you know. Um, I'm G.I. Joe versus Star Wars. You know. Uh, just great stuff. And so they've always been special to me. And um, I'm going to show you some of them. I'm going to show you all of them. 
Um, so I'll, I'll group them up a little bit. I'm going to show you my wrestling ones first. You did get a sneak peek of one yesterday, a very special one, uh, that was sent to me by a, a subscriber, of course, Xavier Sherwood. Um, so here's my lunch boxes. This is my this is my Hulk Hogan, uh, Ricky Steamboat, and Rowdy Roddy Piper lunch box. These are all from the Thermos Company. The company's actually called Thermos, and so those things that you carry around with you, we've we've just given them the name Thermos, but the company is actually called Thermos. Um, just like band aids are not really band aids, the company is called Band Aid. Ah. Jello is not really Jello. The company's called Jello. This is not really a thermos. The company is called Thermos. You learn something every day. So anyway, here's my. Uh, this is uh, one of the earlier wrestling lunch boxes. This is about '86 uh, because of Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat came in the WWF around '86. So this is a 1986 WWF lunch box, of course, featuring the Hulkster. The bad guy, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and Ricky Steamboat. Kind of an interesting selection in Steamboat to put him on the lunchbox. But um, Second uh, WWF one, and this is actually earlier. This is a 1985 lunchbox. Um, this is the first wrestling one I ever had. So, of course, you've got Hulk Hogan front and center. You've got the ultimate bad guy, Roddy Piper. And you've got kind of the... Um, Aside from Hulk Hogan, really kind of the face of the WWF at the time, you know, 1984-85 was Andre the Giant. And then you've got some kind of random, no-name people down here getting beat up. Um, you got your Hulk Hogan box. This one, complete with very old-school WWF thermos or drinking container. Very cool. Oops. Okay. Um, these are all purchased over the years. Flea markets. Um, maybe a couple from some thrift stores. And of course, my most recent wrestling lunchbox. A 1989 WWF Superstars Hulk Hogan. With all of its glorious 1989 colors and that is from Xavier and Sherwood moving on this is a very special lunchbox um, I couldn't find the picture it's around here somewhere sit tight that's right turtle pants that's not up there but oh yeah oh yeah yeah you caught the turtle pants that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm wearing. Very comfortable. Walmart, $12.99. They're from Nickelodeon. Super comfortable loungy pants. Would I wear them outside of my house? Yes. Right, anyway. I can't find the picture, but there is a there is a picture of me from 1985. Coming home from school, first day of school, I had my Crayola book bag and I had my lunch pail in my hand and I'm kind of walking up the driveway with this miserable look on my face and my mom takes a picture well I've had the picture in like a photo album for years my wife came across it a while ago and she noticed the lunch pail and she scoured the earth and was able to find my second grade lunch pail <laughs> this might actually be the first lunch box I ever had that my memory can recollect um, prior to, you know, eight years old. I really don't have much of a memory, but this I owned. This was my second grade lunchbox. Not this actual one, I assume, but this one was my second grade lunchbox. Garfield just attacking some food. This, of course, even better, comes with thermos. So she was able to find the lunchbox that I had when I was eight. That's a special one. Um, another good one. Again, these are all I, I pay. I pay no more than seven or eight dollars for a lunchbox. Maybe ten at the most. 
and a lot of people put crazy prices on their lunchboxes. Um, and I'm sure that there are some really older ones, some Superman ones that might be worth, you know, a little bit. But people put 25 30 bucks on some pretty standard lunchboxes, and there's no way I'm paying it. I have been able to get all of these for less than 10 bucks. But this one's kind of cool. Um, you've heard of the real Ghostbusters, of course, um, based off the movie, uh, the Ghostbusters. Cartoon, real Ghostbusters, very really popular on Saturday mornings. Great cartoon. Spawned a great line of action figures. Um, but there was also another Ghostbusters that um, some folks might not be aware of. It was actually made, um, created from the company called Filmation. And um, it was, I can't remember if it was right before or right after real Ghostbusters, but there was kind of like these two Ghostbusters competing with each other and both were very different obviously the real Ghostbusters we know from the movie and the cartoon this Ghostbusters had some strange characters had like a talking monkey a talking gorilla um, same concept would fight bad guys but anyway this is not the real Ghostbusters but the filmation Ghostbusters lunchbox again very nice very colorful there is a TV series for this which I do have and there are action figures for this which I don't have um, moving along, love my Cabbage Patch Dolls. Cabbage Patch Dolls was a major, major player in the toy world in 1984. 1983, 84. Go on YouTube, look at some old news reports from like 85, 84 about Cabbage Patch Dolls. This was causing riots in toy stores. Parents were climbing on top of each other to try to get Cabbage Patch Dolls when they first came out. Why? I don't know. I I have no idea. But I love Cabbage Patch Dolls. <laughs> you know, somebody can steal that line and loop it over and over again. I love Cabbage Patch Dolls. So when I can grab myself a Cabbage Patch Doll lunchbox, you best believe I'm going to. Um, grabbed this one from Savers for $5.99, a Transformers lunchbox. Very cool. Grabbed this one from the toy show that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago, the Dick Tracy lunchbox. Right. Very awesome. Um... A cartoon that I really like and an action figure line that I really like. Um, I have not watched the cartoon series yet. I do own it, and I have not started collecting the toys. Once I start watching the cartoon, I will start collecting the toys. But this is Brave Star. Um, this was another Savers find. This was $3.99. I do not find these at thrift stores. Um, it's rare, super rare to find anything like this at a thrift store. But I grabbed this for $3.99. Brave Star. Uh, Brave Star was kind of like a space cowboy cartoon. Um, so, cowboys in outer space. Um, I told you a while back that my wife had a uh, has all of her toys in her attic, where she originally, you know, the house that she grew up in. And I don't know when I was making this room, she wanted to add some collection, you know, some items to the museum. So of course I have a Barbie lunchbox. Hey, that's all good. I'm all about it. I'm an equal opportunity collector. Boy, it's hard to go from drinking. I've been killing Coors Light lately for some reason. I've just been buying, you know, like 18 packs of it and just having it on hand. But it's interesting to go from Coors Light to a, to a strong pale ale. And this is a Sierra Nevada uh, Extra IPA. I am not a huge IPA fan at all. Uh, it's just a completely different beer. Um, you know, if you're not familiar with an IPA, it's a very, um, it's a very sharp beer. Uh, I can, I'm, uh, you know, obviously you think of citrus and grapefruit when you talk about an IPA. So it's got like that really kind of intense citrusy, piney, like I said, grapefruity, herbal blast at the end of your, you know, at the end of the drink there, but really hoppy beer, pale ale, torpedo extra IPA, 
doesn't really compare to the Coors Light, I can tell you that much. So to go along with the Barbie lunchbox, we've got Barbie and the Rockers. Pretty cool toy line. I remember my sisters collecting Barbie and the Rockers stuff. Kind of a kind of a gem takeoff, or I don't know if gem was takeoff on Barbie and the Rockers, or if gem was so popular that Barbie and the Rockers decided to take off. But um, you know, Barbie decided to be a rock star, and you know, all the figures came with um, instruments, and you know, they had, they had Barbie and the Rockers. One of my favorite cartoons from a later era, actually, uh, late 80s, early 90s, the part of the Fox after school deal was Disney's DuckTales. Love DuckTales. I do have all three seasons or all three sets of the DuckTales DVDs. And so there is the DuckTales lunchbox. No collection is complete without a G.I. Joe lunchbox. So there is the battle scene G.I. Joe. I actually believe we got some Sergeant Slaughter on here. We got some we got some Sergeant Slaughter. And it's been so long I can't remember any of the other guys' names. But this is 1986 G.I. Joe lunchbox. It does have really a classic looking thermos. Man, does this not bring back memories or what? Some of you guys had to have had this out there. Look at this thing. Isn't that beautiful? Boy, love those thermoses. And, and that's what I'm talking about. You could you could entertain yourself your whole lunch period by just, you know, by just enjoying your lunchbox. I forget about trading lunches. You know, kids trade lunchboxes back and forth to enjoy the, you know, your, your friend's lunchbox. Um, grabbed this at a toy show, not a toy show, at a flea market, just because it was like three bucks. It's another Garfield lunchbox. Again, no no major connection to it, but it was a three dollar lunchbox, and it's Garfield, and it's from nineteen. Well, it's actually from nineteen seventy eight. The the um the image, the Garfield's from nineteen seventy eight. I don't know when the lunchbox is from. I assume mid eighties. And of course, yes, we have the thermos. How many of you guys didn't bring a thermos full of milk? To school, but rather a thermos full of soup. Um, I remember my thermos in school was often filled with chicken and rings soup from Campbell's. I liked the chicken and rings. The chicken noodle off the charts, but I, aside from that, I like chicken and rings much more than chicken and stars. We got the pound puppies. Fun, fun cartoon. Fun um, stuffed animal toy line. I have a couple of pound puppies. They were fun to have. Again, um, not a craze. I wouldn't call them like the craze of the Cabbage Patch Kids, but pound puppies were very popular. Um, the the whole adoption thing, like the, adopting the Cabbage Patch dolls, that was this major thing. You would get adoption papers with the doll. And the pound puppies, you would rescue them from a pound and so you'd basically be adopting the pound puppies and i'm pretty sure they came with adoption paperwork as well but for some reason kids in the 80s really wanted to adopt stuff and so the pound puppies were extremely popular uh when they first came out so much so that they spawned off a uh, cat line a kitten line pound purries and uh and baby ones too i i don't know pound puppy puppies i think they were called and my one and only metal lunchbox, and what a good one it is to have. See, the metal ones are unique in that they are completely uh, covered in artwork. Plastic ones, one side. Metal ones, full. Listen to that. Does that, <laughs> does that not remind you of childhood? That sound running to the bus with your lunchbox. Great He-Man scenery on here. Great battle scenes. Just entertain yourself the whole lunch period by checking out this stuff. Man, I would sit there and look at these lunchboxes and I wouldn't be able to wait to get home and play with all my toys. A couple of just random thermoses that I have. I have a Thundercats thermos. 
Um, and I have an ET thermos that has seen better days. So that's that. That's the that's the lunchbox collection. Wow, I got it done in under 27 minutes. That's amazing. Uh, quick and easy. Done. Done with lunchboxes. Um, awesome stuff. I love my lunchboxes. Major, major memories with childhood. But some of these series collection review videos are going to be quick, like this one. Some are going to be eight videos like the LGNs. We're going to do Hasbro's next. We're going to get back to the wrestling figures. I did forget... Uh, WWF LJN Bendy wrestlers, and I did forget Thumb wrestlers, so I will do those next for kind of like an LJN Extra, an LJN Encore video, Thumb wrestlers, Bendy's, and the Bendy Ring and Cage, and then we'll do Hasbro's, and Hasbro's is going to be like an eight-part series again too. So, real quick um, pickups, and while I'm while I'm going through these, I'll remind you that. Um, in two weeks, on March 19th, I'm going to a toy show, a uh, huge toy show, two floors. This, this toy show is spread out over two floors. Huge, great toy show. I will bring the camera. I will get footage, better footage than I got last time because there's so many more people that nobody's going to notice me walking around with a camera. So I will get a ton of footage for you there, and uh, I will bring back stuff. I'm thinking 150 bucks, 200 bucks. This is what I'm going to spend at this toy show. All right. And uh, also, and I will try to remind you every video I do, October 14th and 15th is RetroCon in Oaks, Pennsylvania. RetroCon is basically a Comic-Con with a focus on retro, on 80s. Car um, cosplay stuff, special guests... Uh, they bring in all kinds of like memorabilia, cars, you know, the Ghostbusters vehicle, and of course, tables and tables and tables of memorabilia. I'm going. I'm going for two nights, and uh, I'm going Friday and Saturday and coming back Sunday. If you can, get yourself to Oaks, PA, October 14th and 15th, and hang out with me at the RetroCon. All right, a couple quick Blu-ray pickups here. Uh, first is a DVD set that I did not even know was in stores. I've seen it on eBay. I've pushed it out, you know, I pushed it deep into my watch list. I was walking through Walmart the other day and I saw it and I had to have it and it was only $24.99. You've all heard of the Twilight Zone, okay? When I do not have that in my collection yet, I will. But there was also a short-lived 80s series called The Twilight Zone. And it's basically an 80s redo. And I have been able to grab that from Walmart. This has, again, basically Twilight Zone, Tales from the Dark Side, Tales from the Crypt type um, episodes, 30-minute episodes. Um, this aired from 85 to 89, so a little bit longer than I actually thought. But we've got people like Bruce Willis in this, Morgan Freeman, uh, Martin Landau, um, Ray Bradbury has made a few of these. Stephen King, Wes Craven. So probably chock full of some pretty good episodes. But this is the 80s version of The Twilight Zone added to the TV show collection. I'll go through these quickly. Uh, I grabbed these from a um, sort of a buyback store today. I took some DVDs in and got some trade-in value for these. So I've got... Um, Anchor Bay's release of Hellraiser on Blu-ray. I've got my man Statham in Killer Elite. Unfortunately, these are all five bucks each, which is a little bit more than I'm used to paying it, you know, on, on the secondary market. But the ring I've added to the horror collection. An 80s must-have 16 candles. And I am an Audrey Hepburn fan. And uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's is a is a, a must see for any Audrey Hepburn fan. She is the epitome of a woman, if you will. Um, this is my two dollar ninety nine cent thrift store that or pawn shop that I like going to. Pulp Fiction. 
the Dark Crystal. I did watch Labyrinth and loved it, so I decided, hey, why don't you watch this one, too? So Dark Crystal. Sausage Party, which was $2.99. I only grabbed it because it was $2.99. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to watch it, and then I'm going to give it to you guys. If anybody out there wants Sausage Party, let me know. No slipcover. Let me know. Wizard of Oz, must have, Blu-ray, put it on Blu-ray, put it in the collection, watch it once a year, no big deal, Wizard of Oz. Well, I went ahead and paid full price for another Blu-ray that I had to have. This is one of my top five horror movies of all time, not counting the series like Nightmare on Elm Street and, you know, uh, Friday the 13th. This is one of my top five favorite horror movies, and it's part of the Vestron video re-release uh, series from... Uh, I don't know, Shout Factory, one of those. But we've got The Gate. So this is actually the newest, newest release that I've ever bought. Like, this just came out last week, I think. And I have The Gate on Blu-ray. See this movie. It is such a fun 80s horror movie. I love it. And now it's on Blu-ray... And it's got all kinds of awesome special features. Really great stuff. I'm really going to enjoy watching this. So that's the pickups for the week. That's the Lunchbox collection. We are rolling along. We're going to continue. Hasbro's are next. Bendy's, Thumb Wrestlers, Hasbro's. That's what you can look for. Toy Show coming up in two weeks. Thank you all very much. I will see you Take care.